Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Pen Habit. My name is Matt Armstrong, and got a neat little pen for you today. This is a pen that I got on eBay, vintage pen, by a company by the name of Merlin. Again, it's a little itty-bitty pen, um, not as small as some of the other itty-bitty pens I have reviewed this season, but, uh, but still pretty small. Neat pen, though, uh, quite unlike anything I've ever seen. So I did some research, as much as I could, on Merlin, the, the pen manufacturer. I will say I'm going off of hearsay. There's not a lot of information about Merlin out there. There is a little bit, and you can find it if you search for it. But from what I understand, Merlin was a Dutch manufactory. Uh, it was in the Netherlands, but it was run by some, some Germans who had fled Germany during the World War era. I'm, that's what I'm, what I'm trying to piece together. This pen is from the early to mid-1940s right when the war would have been going on, or so I understand. And, and by the way, if there's anyone out there who knows more of Merlin history, please, by all means, correct, correct me on this because uh, I'm just piecing together what I can find from a couple of cursory Google searches. Um, from what I understand, they made a lot of pens that never saw the light of day. And then several years ago, someone found a huge cache of these pens and all of a sudden they became available. Now, Merlin's not one of the better known manufacturers on the market, but they do have some really interesting pens. So the pen in question is the Merlin 33. And what makes this pen the most interesting, in my opinion, is the material from which it's made. It's made from celluloid, but this is a purple web celluloid. It's, it's bluish with kind of a purple undertone or purple with a bluish undertone really interesting celluloid pattern. It reminds me of the green hatched material that's on my Conway Stewart 24, uh, but not, not quite the same. And you can actually see, I don't know if you, this shows up on the video here, but you can see a seam right down one side of the pen. So it's very interesting material. And a pretty uncommon one, from what I understand. One of the reasons why I, I got the pen was because it was a really uncommon color and a, a fairly rare material, from what I understand. Uh, pretty, pretty standard shape, nothing too flashy about the pen. There's black finial on the top, a clip that's a little loose, a little flexible, but not too bad. It says Merlin down the side. Got a little brass colored ring here. Then a a gold embossed Merlin 33 on the side, and then a black finial blind cap. Now this has a blind cap because it is a button filler. So for those not familiar with the button filler concept, you stick the pen in the ink, you press the button, you release it. When you press the button, a bar inside pushes the sack, you release it, sucks ink up. Works pretty well. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, and I actually kind of like the button filler system. That's one that I kind of wish that, uh, you know, if Edison, were, since Edison kind of redid the uh, the vacuumatic filling system, which they call the pump filler, I'd love to see them do a button filler as well. I'd, I'd get behind that because I kind of, I actually kind of like the button filler concept. So kind of neat. Uh, on the inside, you've got a nicely shaped concave section. This is probably my favorite shape for a section. I just love that kind of concave shape. And then you've got a really nice 14 karat gold nib here. And just says 14K 585, which is 58.5% gold. And the Merlin logo, which is an M, a little crown on top of the crest. And uh, this is a semi-flexible, I'm going to call it a semi-flexible nib. It does have a fair bit of spring to it, kind of neat. So as you can see, it's a fairly small pen, um, and I mentioned this before. It's a, it's a fairly small pen, and one that I have to use posted because it just won't fit in my hand otherwise. But once it's posted, it actually writes pretty well for me. Now I do hold it a little bit higher up, and I'll get to that when I get to the measurements. But um, overall, it's a nice little pen. So, speaking of measurements, let's dive in. So capped, you're looking at 119 millimeters, fairly short. Uncapped, you're down to 107 millimeters. And then when you post it, a very reasonable 137. Now, I will mention that 
because there, the cap band isn't down at the very edge, you do run the risk of cracking the material. If you post it too hard, it's just held on by a little bit of friction. Um, so it's not a super deep posting in that respect. Um, 137 millimeters, very comfortable to hold. The section is 8.3 millimeters in the middle, which is a little narrower than I like. So I hold it up on the barrel, which is 10.3 millimeters and right about the exact size for me. And then the cap, its widest point is only 12.3 millimeters. And it's a light pen, so it's 8 grams uncapped and 14 grams uh, capped or posted. So nice light pen, good for smaller hands, really lovely color, and, uh, and a pretty darn good writer too. So let's dive in and do a little bit of writing here. So this is a Merlin. 33, and this is with a 14 carat semi flex nib, and it's a button filler, and the ink is Diamine Regents, Regent, sorry, Regency Blue. My goodness, I don't know what it is. But every time I sit down in front of the camera and start writing, it's like I turn into the cartographic Rain Man. It's like I can't do anything right. Actually, that's not really what Rain Man was. I don't know what I turn into other than I, I can't write well once I start talking on camera. That's why I don't talk when I write normally. Okay, we're on a Rhodia dot pad as always. And let me do our little quote. Okay, now I don't know if you could hear that on the microphone or not, but this pen is a little bit noisier than normal. It does, uh, it does have a little bit of feedback, and as a pen with some line variation, which I know you're wanting to see it, I'll get to it, I promise. Um, pens with flex generally tend not to be as smooth as, as rigid nibs. That's just kind of goes with the territory, but it's, it's nice and wet. Uh, you know, even with no flex, it's, it's nice, wet. It's a, it's a very fine line naturally, but look, I mean, that's, that's nice and wet right there. This is a neat ink too. I, uh, it goes on, looks almost black, but when you, when you spread it out like that, it's a really nice blue color. So very interesting blue black. I don't know that I've seen anything quite like it. Uh, okay. Now, because I know everyone is dying to see it, here is the pen's line variation. So clearly, this pen has goes from a very fine line to a quite. I would almost put this at a a medium flex. I mean, I think I've not measured it. It does require just a little bit more pressure than than my uh, Waterman flex, but it's uh, man, it's got some very nice line variation. And I will say that this pen was well under $100, well under $100. Uh, so it is a very lovely pen, very nice writer. Um, I haven't had problem number one with ink flow. Uh, I like the button filler. It is a little smaller than I wish. It, I wish this were maybe half a size larger. It would fit my hand just a little bit better. But man, it is a really neat little pen. Oh, reverse writing very scratchy. Um, so there you go. Uh, overall though, this is a super nice pen. We do the uh, so. Not, not the best. I usually tilt my pen or my pad quite a bit. 
Um, probably should reposition the camera. So you can see there's a, that's, man, I'm a mess today. You can see there's quite a bit of line variation though, which is, which is neat for a pen. You know, anyone who tells you that vintage flex is too big a pain in the butt or is too expensive, a, a, a neat trick is to look for pens that aren't necessarily the Watermans, the Wall Eversharps, the Maybe Todds, the Swans, etc. Look for the pens that maybe not, that may not be the, the most well-known brands like a Merlin, for instance. I mean, if you wanted to play around with flex, this is a really inexpensive way to do it. It's, it's not as cheap as, say, a Noodler's pen, but it's not a whole lot more expensive than a Noodler's pen. And, uh, and it's going to be a much, much better writing experience. Um, so, you know, give, it, give them a try. They're, they're nice pens. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed with this little Merlin. It's a, it's a really nice one. So anyway, that is my review of the small Merlin 33. It's a pen I like quite a bit. It's a material I love. I really do like this purple web material. I like the button filler. Um, it's in excellent shape. And, uh, and it's got a really neat nib on it. So that is it. If you have any questions or comments, you want to correct my understanding of the history of Merlin, head over to penhabit.com. The link to this article with its additional photos is down in the description below, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.